YouTube, this is uh, Matthew Morgan. I don't care, I'm saying my name, I don't really care anymore. Um, just want to say this here. Uh, this video got to do with getting your priorities in check. Seeing a lot of people's out of place, and it ain't good. Anyway, a couple things. One, if your bills ain't on or your bills ain't paid but you got nice clothes and yeah rent is hella behind but you got nice clothes your kids ain't eight in days but you got nice stuff get your priorities in check bruh if your weave and your nails and your looks matter more than your financial well-being as far as a future for your seed or yourself. Get your sh in check, bro. If you got money to go to concerts, but you ain't got no money to put into your child's college fund, get your priorities in check. If you got money for Jordans, but you're behind on your rent, get your priorities in check. If your kids keep coming to you saying that they hungry, and you don't have no money for that, but you got money for everything else, get your priorities in check. You don't work or do shit, but you got all this money that you waste on dumb shit. Then you got to go run other people for they stuff they work hard for. Get your shit together. I'm just saying. Then you got all this weave and nice nails and all this fake name brand shit or real whatever and all this jewelry. But your house looks like shit. Get your priorities in check. And I hate to say it, but I'm going to say it. Don't care how you feel, just going to say it. If you had sex with a dude, or a woman, because guys can be the same way, I ain't, I ain't finna sit there and be sexist about it, and you have a baby with that person, and all the reason you had a baby with that person is to either keep them around or get money from them, get your damn priorities and check a damn child ain't no paycheck. Please keep that in mind. Because remember, a child did not ask to be here. You f and you brought him here. Please don't forget that. And if you value partying over raising your kids that you brought here, get your priorities in check. Because as the old head told me, once you have a baby, your life is not your own. Every little piece of your life that you enjoy, once that baby comes out of you, it is done. You can't do it no more. Don't care how much you're used to it. Once that is done, you're done with your life. Your life belongs to that baby forever. You didn't want that. You shouldn't have, <laughs> shouldn't have laid down with a nigga. That's all I'm saying. Same thing with guys. Be getting with women because you too lazy to want to do better, so you live off of them. Yeah, guys do that. Let's not lie. They do it. Women ain't the only ones that do it. Next subject. If you go to church and you're tithing every Sunday and your pastor got a Bentley and you drive and you, you, you and you still riding Port Authority, get your priorities in check. If you tithe every Sunday and you can't pay your bills, you need to get your priorities in check, man. And he tell you, oh, you tithe, God will bless you, God will bless you. Well, okay, one little correction to that. Um, God don't like money. God can't stand the sight of money. To be honest with you, as the story go, there was a rich man and then there was a beggar. Some stuff people be forgetting because church don't like to teach certain stuff like it used to. There was a rich man and there was a beggar. 
Beggars sat outside a rich man's window constantly, begging for food. Rich man gave him scraps. Constantly. Beggar eventually passed away. Rich man eventually passed away. Beggar went to heaven. Jesus let him in. But you know, here's the big thing about it, cause just, just so it's not confused. When I say beggar, I don't mean a person that just begs knowing they could do better. What I mean is someone who cannot, like they're physically unable to work, they're physically unable to do anything. That's what I mean. Not a person who can and just won't. I'm talking about someone who can't and wants to, but physically or mentally they can't. Like someone ain't got no legs no arms, something like that, or they might be crippled, or blind, or something of that nature, that's what I mean, not someone who can do something, but they're just too damn lazy, anyway, he, the, the beggar went to, uh, went to Abraham's bosom, as they say, which is a realm outside of heaven, since he wasn't saved, but, you know, God had mercy on him and let him stay there, Rich man passed away. He went to hell. Here's the thing I'm trying to say. The church be teaching that God likes money. But don't the Bible tell you that you can't serve both God and money? I'm, I'm still trying to understand where, why y'all ain't studying this stuff. Like, y'all say, oh, I know the Bible so well. So, if you know it, then how do you miss the fact of your God don't like money because he know where it came from. And money is an impure matter or it's impure to have in general. That's why when you go to heaven, you don't see money. Just like when you go to heaven, you don't see a Bible or a church or religion. Because God ain't for none of that shit. But you go to hell, you'll see a Bible, you'll see religion, and you'll see money. Yeah, you figure it out later why it's there. Anyway. But like I said, if your pastor is driving a Bentley, and you on the Port Authority, and you've been tithing every Sunday, he tells you, oh, God will bless you, God will bless you. Just put this money in this collection plate and God, bro, that is not how God works. To break it down, to, so you understand how God works, and by God, I mean Jehovah Allah, Him. Just to straighten it out, because there's too many gods and no one's explaining these things properly. Now, respect, much respect to whatever God you believe in. I ain't hating on it. I'm just saying these things need to be explained better. Anyway, yo, God don't like money. That's just the final point of what I'm saying. And he's telling you God's going to bless you, first of all, um, to make a narrow way straight. There is more than one God for more than one purpose. There's one God, but then there's many different beings that people see as gods. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, how God blesses you necessarily. One, you do good by people that will come back to you. Two, if you know you've been in a bad place and you've been struggling and still trying to do what's right by people, that is how you ask him and based off of what he sees is best for you, that is what will occur. But you think you got to give God money for him to bless you, bro. This is not no pimping situation. God is not out here trying to pimp you, bro. That's not how it works. God blesses you based off your character, based off how you treat people, based off how you do things. Like you get punished based off of how you do things. 
Like if you do evil to people, evil comes back to you. You do good, good comes back to you. But then there's sometimes people can do evil to people and good will still come back to them. Just know that ain't God. But yeah, anyway, because a lot of people assume that is. It's not. It's definitely not. But anyway. But the point being, if you paying tabs to the church, and the building still looks like crap, it's your priorities together. If you pay in tax to the church and your house is going into foreclosure, get your priorities together. If the pastor is eating shrimp and steaks off your towels while you're eating ramen noodles and drinking faucet water, get your priorities in check. Please remember, Jesus never accepted money for any purpose because he knew money was evil and it separates people and money make people do wicked things to each other. It's a piece of cotton, but it makes man do dumb things just to get it. I, and it's funny, slaves pick that and their own people are so just twisted in the head about a dollar. That literally don't mean nothing. It is literally some cotton with a barcode on it. That's all it is. It's not anything, but... People mentally been tricked down through the years to think that money means something. Really, it don't. It really don't. But, yeah. But y'all keep tithing and giving y'all money to the church if you want to. And then they keep telling you God's going to bless you. And it's been 30 years. Where's the blessing? Because it ain't came yet. Then you go to your pastor well, Pastor, I've been tithing and I've been serving in the church as long, but I've been asking God to do stuff and it ain't been happening. Pastor tell you, oh, well, you know, you may need to tithe more and you may need to get in more ministry. You know, keep the faith. It'll work out. Then it never does. You know why? Because God knows you're doing things under false pretenses. In other words, you're not doing it because you want to do it. You're doing it because you expect something for doing it. That's why it ain't happening. God don't want you. Oh, you know what? Hey, you know what I mean? She paid me. Let me throw something her way. She got in these ministries. Let me throw something her way. No, that, that ain't the way that work. No. If you're going to do something for God, do it because it's right, not because you want something. Because then that becomes a habit. And it's a habit in the wrong way. And then when it don't happen, then it's like you're looking at the pastor like, so why ain't God bless me? All he'll tell you to do is keep tithing and keep being in ministry and then you notice nothing's happening. You go back to him, you keep asking him what's going on, he'll keep just telling you the same thing. Maybe you ain't praying hard enough. Maybe you need to tithe more. Join. When the whole reality is that is not what God wanted you to do in the first place. All he wanted you to do was go to him, tell him what's wrong, ask him to help you, and keep it there. All this stuff about you joining ministries and talent, that ain't got nothing to do with anything. Now, I'm not saying he won't bless you if you do what's right, but do not do it for that purpose, because then it won't. Because now you're just doing stuff, not because you want to help people, but because you're expecting him to give you something. And uh, I'm pretty sure the Bible says something about that somewhere. Trying to remember what it was. Oh, yeah, when you're praying to God, don't have a double-minded reason for why you're doing it, because he already knows. Basically, you're doing this ministry not because you care about the person, not because you want the person to be made better, not because you care about God, not because you want the situation to be better. You're doing it because you want something. It's like a child who go to their parents and ask them for something. 
but then then they know that to get it from their parent, they got to do something, or else they ain't going to get it, so basically it's just, you only do something for God when you know he's going to do something for you. That is not a good partnership at all. Instead of you just doing it because you genuinely give a crap, you're doing it because you want something. That ain't good. Because now you're just pimping God and that that ain't cool. Because there's a lot of people that tend to do that. Like, they go to God when they want something, then the second they get it, I don't need you till the next time I want something. Yeah, that's not cool. But point being, priority, bro, priority. And I'm going to tell you right now, if after a certain age, your cons outweigh your pros, which means your bad outweigh your good, you might want to look at that. And to cover this, relationship-wise, and trust me, I've been down this road, so I know people don't think I know, but I do. If you literally put the cart before the horse or you put the man before the child, that's a problem. Switch that around. Why? Because the dude ain't guaranteed or the woman ain't guaranteed to be in your life forever, but that child is. If you put the man or the woman before your seed, that's a problem. Why? Why? Because one, you and the dude you with or the woman you with might not even actually like each other. But again, because you've been together so long, you don't pay attention to the fact that y'all can't stand each other. Which ain't good. Because then that child grow up in a dysfunctional house thinking their parents like each other when they don't. But then you slowly catch on, and that's when things get bad. Because then now all that fakeness you doing around your child starts to seep out. They start catching it. Now they taking that to school, and it's a problem. So that's why I'm saying, man. After a certain age, you need to start looking at yourself. Studying yourself. Looking at your situation. Studying your situation. Saying like, okay, so I ain't doing this right. How am I supposed to fix this? I ain't doing that right. How am I supposed to fix that? It's as simple as that. Either you get your priorities in check or you just going to be getting checked by your priorities. Which means your whole life is going to amount to nothing. You don't better yourself. Ain't nothing around you going to get better. And then you're going to be sitting there mad, like, I don't know why my life sucks so much. I don't know why my life is so miserable. Yes, you do. You know why it's miserable, because you never changed it. That's why it's miserable. Like, only one person that can fix your misery, that is you. Why I say that is because God can't force you to fix nothing he can lead you to do it he can't force you to do it he can't force you to get a job he can't force you to do better he can't force you to love nobody he can't force you to do nothing it's just open door either you walk through it or you don't simple as that and at the end of the day you just gonna have to look at yourself in the mirror and see either someone who exceeded in life or you fucking failed. It's one or the other. You succeeded, you excelled, or you bombed and you failed. It's one or the other. But that's all because you didn't get your shit together when you had the chance to do it. And then, you know, you got certain individuals that like pointing their fingers at other people instead of just yeah, I'm going to just deal with this myself, you know, I'm going to work on me, I'm going to get this done, I'm going to keep it moving. Yeah. Because remember, you're your best friend like you're your worst enemy, and if you don't find ways to better yourself, 
Ain't nobody else going to do that. So, at the end of the day, when you're looking in that mirror, what do you see? A success story or a failure? It's just reality. Somebody who's been through a lot of stuff, matured from it, and bettered themselves, or somebody who's been through a lot, stopped giving a shit, and just gave up. Question being, which one are you? Because, like, after a certain point, line, you're, 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 after a certain point, you're going to have to look at it whether you ignore it or you accept it. Which one are you? Because, um, as far as it's been told to me, time don't stand still for nobody. The earth don't stop rotating for nobody. People are being born and dying every second. A building is being structured like it's being knocked down. You know, you going broke like you like you gaining money every day. So I'm just saying, when you look in that mirror, when you, from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep, what have you done between that time? Because. Another person, what they doing outside is not going to make you any better inside. So, just remember that. From the second you get your ass out of that bed to the second you lay back in it, what have you done all day? Because trust me, when you get older, you're going to wish you did something because... Them old years are going to be a mug, especially when you ain't got nothing to fall back on. It's just going to suck bad. So like I said, I ain't judging. I ain't throwing stones. It's just reality. We all got to face. We all got to go through. We all got to deal with it. It's just life. So, yeah. Peace.